fighting high prices, not only by murdering high prices, but by blowing the living shit out of high prices. Yes, sir, you heard me right. Now, here's an example. 1973 Cadillac Coupe de Ville for $62.99. That price is too high. Yes, sir. Here's another one. It's some Lincoln Continental Mark IV, 1973. It's loaded. It's got air conditioning. It's got a stereo. It's got white wall radio tires. It's got power steering, power brakes, power seats, power windows, and a price that is just too high. Yes, sir. Now remember, friends. Ah! Look out, Marshal Lucky. It's high prices. Take this. You dirty old high prices! You got me, Marsha! Jesus Christ! Yes, sir. So remember, friends, that's New Deal used cars. Now wait just a goddamn minute. What the hell is this? Is this a 1977 Mercedes 450 SL for twenty-four thousand dollars? That's too fucking high. Son of a bitch! Uh, yes, sir. We blew the shit out of that overpriced motherfucker just the way we blow the shit out of all high prices down here at New Deal Used Cars. So y'all come on down. Did you hear what I said? New Deal Used Cars. So y'all come on down. Did you hear what I said? I have heard you with unmistakable clarity. Hello, folks. Welcome to the Sim Podcast. I was slow to talk right there for a second. I apologize for that. <laughs> But you know me, I'm going to nothing out, but I have one of your hosts, Gary Hill, with me today, uh, this afternoon, actually, we're doing this uh, Friday afternoon, the sunshine, what are we doing? We're in the we're in the house, podcast thing. Yes, Susanna's here, how are you? I'm doing well, enjoying the thaw hey. out here. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great thaw, it's a great feeling, you know. A... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to kick it to Suzanne first, I'm sure she's uh... She's got lots to say about this, maybe. What have you watched lately, girl? Oh, God. I've seriously I've been trying to dole out episodes of the Elisa Lamb thing on Netflix. And it is absolutely fascinating. And still delving into the true crime thing. There's a series. It's not the most well done. But interesting enough, called Rampage about spree killers on Amazon Prime. I am into season six of NYPD Blue. Still an interesting show. Forged in Fire started last week, so I'm super thrilled about that. And really pissed off that they canceled Ma. I've always I love Alice and Janney. I love the show. I am sad Christy left, but I I think that there's more material there. There was I think it was wrong to be canceled, and I even signed a petition to save it. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't watched um any of that yet. It's just um, I mean, I watched some of the show. I haven't watched like further into the show, but I, I know it was a thing that Anna Ferris left for. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what reason. I didn't read that far into it, but um, it's just um, yeah. I, I kind of knew the show wasn't going to be a thing. I, I gave it two more seasons. It only lasted one more season. It's, it's kind of. I'm really surprised that that she couldn't hold the weight on her own. Maybe it was poor writing. I, I don't know what, what to attribute that to, but um, uh. It's a great show. If you guys haven't checked out, Mom, it's uh, her and um, uh, Alice and Jenny are funny together on the show, and I would recommend it. And there's one of those things where I said, I'm not going to give Chuck Lorre any more of my time. And, you know, Mom happened. And, like, man, fuck you, Chuck Lorre. <laughs> 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 you know? That's the guy that made Big Bang Theory and Two and a Half Men and, you know, lot, lots of stuff. It's just uh, after that, after Big Bang went so long... He got so redundant about halfway through and just kept on going. I was like, I'm not going to get many more of my fucking time. And then bomb happened. So uh, I'm grateful for the seasons that we got on that show. Yeah, the last few seasons of Big Bang Theory were just, as you said, redundant. It was just the same things over and over. Everybody got paired off and it was the whole fun of the show was gone. So I I don't know. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's, it's whatever, man. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, me and myself, I rewatched 
uh, Hed- Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Uh, I, I, I got it on Blu-ray. One of the Blu-rays that I own actually plugged into the player that I had finally after like six, after like five or six months, and that's the first thing it turned on. And uh, the Criterion Blu-ray is is a uh, something special. If you guys don't own that, I I recommend going to pick that up. They um they did a great job, but the the sound is amazing, the picture's amazing, and lots of extras. And uh, speaking of extras. I don't know if you saw that, Suzanne, but he gave you a reason to buy me a region-free player. Uh, well, one of the many reasons, but Arrow was putting out a UK-only edition of Over the Edge on Blu-ray, a special edition. Oh, and, I um, saw that. I got to buy a region-free player now because of that. And that's, that's, that's the kicker for me, is that movie right there. Yeah, I've got to get a new region-free player because mine died. Yeah. It lasted about two years, and it died. I was pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 mine broke too. Oh, well, mine burnt up, but it broke before that, so it, it, it broke then burnt. So there's that. Oh uh, God, double yeah. whammy. Double whammy, man. I watched Kelly's Heroes because I was invited to come on Bite Size Cinema for that, and I don't need an excuse to watch Kelly's Heroes. It, it's just it's a one of those films that stands test test test, test speak. Don't say testies. Speak the words. <laughs> test of time. Uh, it's. it's it's a great war film for people who don't like don't really like war film. Great ensemble of people that you may know and things besides the the main the main uh, the main heroes of the movie. And um, yeah, it's like I said, the show. It's one of those films your dad that my dad used to watch that I had no interest in. And once you watch it, you see all the character actors and all the genre actors that are in the movie. You're like, okay, I'm I'm in. I'll watch Kelly's Heroes multiple times. Uh, yeah, I remember watching that with my father too. Oh boy! Yeah. Besides that, I um, oh, I watched um, what's this movie called? It was a great western that I I, I found randomly that I never heard of before, called The Violent Men from 1955. It's uh, it's got um, Glenn Ford um, in, in a western who knew uh, Edward G. Robinson and Barbara Stanwyck. It, Holy it's, shit! It, it, yeah, it's pretty good. It's uh, it's our friend's mutual account. Um, <clears throat> your basic. You know, let, let, guy comes back from the war, Glenn Ford, and uh, he's gonna go, he's gonna sell his ranch to this this baron who owns like most of the valley. But of course, the guy is is a piece of shit. Uh, Edward G. Robinson, who's who's a cripple in the movie, uh, owns most of the valley and lowballs him. So of course, Glenn Ford has to fight back from all these people that are doing for these people that are doing uh, stuff that's being wrong to the valley, including. And Richie Robinson's brother in the movie, who's like the main, the main heavy of the movie. And, um, yeah, it, 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 it's pretty, it's pretty wild and pretty violent for, for a 1955 film. And, uh, I, I, I dug it quite a bit. It's not your, like, you know, gun smoke kind of deal. It's just, you know, a guy who killed people in the war still has that stigma on him and, and comes back and wants to run away with his fiance. But of course he has that opposing force of, uh, uh, one of the greatest Hollywood actors that ever lived, Mr. Robert G. Robinson. And I I said this in another group. He he could act better uh, th- th- than most, even on crutches. <laughs> you know, on their best day. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, 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 the Violent Men is, is, is a really good one. And a great score, too. Um, we love our scores here. Um, watch, the, watch The Muppet Show. I know Suzanne will watch The Muppet Show on Disney+. Plus. Oh, yeah, I've been watching The Muppet Show. I just think it's hilarious that we have to put a disclaimer up if there is any hint of, I don't know, I don't even want to call it impropriety. And the ones no. that I recently watched, smoking, as you know, that's going to trigger some people. No, I, said, I don't think it's a triggering thing. I think it's it's a family network. And, and I get I get why they did what they did, but they didn't edit it either, which Disney Plus has been doing. They've been editing a few, few movies here and there. So I'm grateful uh, that they just had the little disclaimer at the top there, and they didn't edit anything out of it. And uh, from what I understand, they're only missing two episodes. The one's the Brooke Shields episode for for some sort of legal reason. It's not on there, and I forget the other one. But it's it's they're mostly there, which is a good sign considering only three seasons made it to DVD. So the other ones are kind of lost in obscurity as far as like having access to them. So uh, yeah. they're there. They're there. I'm not as upset as, as, as Suzanne is because I, I expected it. I mean, it, it was made in the 70s and at the end of the early 80s. And, of course, there's going 
going to be some adult jokes, like like not adult, like like tongue and cheek jokes. I mean, if you, yeah. if you watch, I, I'm I'm curious now if I go turn on Peter Pan, the original Peter Pan, if they'll have like something about this movie, uh, does stereotypes with Native Americans or something like that? Because there's a scene in that movie you've seen it for a long time. Where they go visit Tiger Lily's village, and they're smoking the peace pipe around the the campfire or in, inside the, the hut. And oh yeah. Peter Pan's face. Peter Pan's face gets red as a as the devil's dick or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I guess I mean I grew up with it. You know, my parents didn't think anything of setting me in front of the TV with the Muppet Show, and I'm pretty sure they probably snickered more than I did. I was just fascinated by the Muppets, and I mean, it's just it's. It's just bizarre. I mean, there was an episode with Sandy Duncan dancing around and downing drinks and talking about being tipsy. I mean, come on. And that didn't get a, a disclaimer, but God help me some in mi- very minor reference to smoking that I watched the episode. I didn't even catch it. Mm-hmm. They're freaking out over. I don't think it's freaking out. I think we're covering their bases. Like, you know, we're gonna show our, our show children the Muppet Show, not not parents, but like the Disney Plus gonna show the, the parents the new children the Muppet Show, and the parents, you know, God forbid they never seen it before. Maybe they see like a couple of the newer Muppet projects, and they say, "Wow, this this is something I've never seen before. Let me show it to my kids." And then stuff happens in the episode, which is really you know, again not triggered, you know, really minor stuff, but would upset certain parents. But if, if that if that if that um disclaimer wasn't there, then the bases aren't covered. So I guess this is a beef, a beef and a non-beef because I think that uh, it's it's not that big of a deal to me that that's there because I get it from a legal standpoint. From a, the, so from the way so many parents are butt hurt nowadays, you know, I mean back in the day, even some parents now we, we, we could watch you know it, well. To an extent, I, I was a uh, I was a church going person until I was about thirteen years old. So the stigma of that kind of stuck around of stuff that I could watch, like Tales from the Crypt, for example. Tales from the Crypt was a show my, my parents were, were were aware of when it was on those first couple seasons were were uh, was on, and uh, I was allowed to watch it. We we had access to HBO. I had to have my cousin sneak me like bootleg video videotapes of ones he recorded off HBO for me like on, on the slide because because there was like boob and, and like blood in them and i wasn't allowed to watch because i was still a, ch- a church going lad at that point and my, my my mother was a little a little sketchy about that and um that's that's just something that 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 she that she did you know who, who am i to tell another parent you know, unless they're like unless i witnessed something really extreme you know like yada 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 you know, or like kissing their ass a little too much and then i'm involved and, th- and then i'll step in you know, but most of these parents now, and I'll, this is this is like the beef segment, I guess, of the show. You know, by the time you get to the kid and they are the way they are, it's way too late for you to say something because they're already yeah. they're too they're too sheltered or they're too controlled or you know they, they don't have like that. You know, we, we had that cool uncle or that cool brother that would show us things. You know, they they might still have that, but the parents would be a lot more uproarious nowadays than they were back in the day. You know, my parents were pretty lenient with me. I think they always trusted me to make the right decisions. And I, I don't know. I, like I said, my mom, I, one of the funniest things I remember growing up, I was curled up on the couch. My mom was sitting in her chair knitting and we were watching the howling. And then my dad comes rolling in the driveway. My mom's like, roll over and pretend you're asleep. Like, okay. Yeah, my dad really didn't. He like my, my father hated the fact that I liked horror movies. He would get all bent out of shape. But yet, I sat with him and watched Scarface and all of these war movies and westerns where there's way more killing going on than you know a, a small body count movie. How does he feel about Manchi Chi werewolves? You know, <laughs> but no, I, I, I just, I, once again, different parents, different styles. You know, like I said, my mom. And I swear, I, I I was born at 30 years old. And my mom, like I said, was pretty lenient with what I could and couldn't watch. Did you say you were born at 30 years old, like your body was a 30-year-old body and you were born? Oh, you, yeah, my you, brain was 30 years old when I was born. I was going to say, your mom is dumb. 
on Sarah's price, plus you really hard, man, because it's, it's, it's uh, just torn wide open. If she gave birth to 30 year old men. No, because I just, I was in, I grew up as an only child, and I was always around and, until we moved. I was always alone, not really alone. I mean, I was, but I mean, around adults and not so much kids. So I, I, I matured a little quicker, I think, because of that. Or oh, I, I get don't it. know. Are we really mature, Suzanne? I, I can't really tell if we're really mature. <laughs> uh, have we matured? It, it's, it's one of those things. Oh, yeah, my I gosh. I have more temper, t- temper tantrums now than I did when I was a kid. Well, that's because you're more <laughs> observant. It's all that is. Yeah. Well, you know what? I don't like this. You know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, what else? Oh, well, I watched, um, oh, I finished, uh, WandaVision. I finished WandaVision. I watched the new WandaVision today, and it still continues to be great. I'll, I'll, I'll sing the praises of WandaVision every show until, until of course, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier show come out, which is, like, immediately after this is over. And then I'll sing the praises of that, probably. So, but if you, if you haven't watched it, and you, you're, like, wedged in, like, that third or fourth episode saying where is this going just just keep going because it gets it gets awesome past that and um um yeah we'll talk about one of those cast members um and one of them either talk about. uh iris wanted to be here i didn't mention that earlier but she had uh some personal stuff going on um that she had to take care of so she could not be here so next week she she will be here hopefully um but the movies we're doing tonight Ooh. yeah i'll put out the yeah one second I'm going to leave that in because you want to know why. You know, I, I just got a call. Uh, it, it's still going, too. Shut up, phone. Ha, you get those calls that look like real phone numbers that say uh, your extended, uh, and it's related to the show, that your extended warranty for your car is up that you didn't have, have a warranty for in the first place. That's, that's another one of my bugaboos. But um, I, I digress. But um, cause the show we're doing tonight, yay, or today in the afternoon, is a <laughs> show about, yay, used car dealerships and uh, the, the wacky shenanigans that they go about them. Uh, we're doing the classic used cars, uh, starring the great Kurt Russell and Garrett Graham and Jack Warden. So many more baby faces that you might recognize. And um, The Goods, uh, starring Jerry Piven, Bing Rames, and, and uh, one of the actresses that show up in WandaVision, uh, uh, the, the beautiful and talented Catherine Hahn. Um, we'll get to the very first one in, in uh, sequential order with used cars uh, right after this. Coming this summer from Columbia Pictures, a movie that asks the question, would you buy a used car from this man? Oh, here at New Deal Used Cars, we are uh, stripping away inflation. We're taking off those high prices. Or this there, man. We have a group of immoral charlatans masquerading as businessmen. They will stoop to the lowest. Oh, most of Roy. Roy. Would you buy a used car from this yeah, man? Sign your name. Ray. Hahn. Or from this man. I want you to look inside. No, I don't want to look inside. Oh, just get in the car. Get in there. Get in there. Well, these people did. Used cars about a group of dedicated businessmen who'll do anything to sell a car. We can't do a commercial wearing these. We'll come off looking like a couple of $695. You got it. Margaret, let's take a look under the hood, shall we? What? Hey, look, fair. Now, wait just a minute. What the hell is this? Is this a 1977 450 SL for $24,000? That's too f- high! You know, he, you know, he just said, Did you notice that? No, he said, That's a f- violation. Used cars. It's a dirty business. Used Cars, from the year of my birth, 1980. Uh, this stars, of course, Kurt Russell, Jack Warden, Gary Graham. I forgot about Frank McRae. That, I've always loved that guy. Um, Deborah Harvard, who, was, who I know as um, the, the coach's wife, 
from from just the ten of us. I'm sure she's been in other things, but that's a. Uh, I watched a lot of that when I was a kid. It was it was the uh, SCTV and a uh, comedy god Joe Flaherty's in this movie. Michael McKean shows up for a hot second. Uh, the, the, Al Lewis shows up for a hot second. There's a lot of guys that show up for a hot second in this movie, and it makes me smile. And um, <laughs> Jack Warden has two parts for me. If I forgot to say about, about that. Uh, two parts for Jack Warden. Um, directed and, and written by, by Robert Zemeckis. And, um, well, Bob Gale, too, as well. So this is like, this is this is before Back to the Future. This is before all the, all that stuff. And um, I, 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 I dug this movie for the most part. But I love to hear what Suzanne says about it. Oh my God, this movie is part of my youth. It you could not ask for a better group of ensemble actors. I mean, Deborah Harmon was, I think, on e- almost every TV show in the late seventies and early eighties. Um, Garrett Graham everywhere, and of course Kurt Russell and the wonderful Jack Warden, who plays twin brothers in this movie. Go figure. I just find this movie hilarious. I I think my, I love Garrett Graham. I love Toby the dog. I think some of the bits in this movie are just still to this day, like double over in laughter. Funny. Lenny and Squiggy playing the unscrupulous cable guys busting in on the presidential address, a big football game while they're doing these really terrible commercials. And my one of my favorites though, I love the that big family who are watching one of the watching the football game and they bust in with that commercial where the poor girl gets her dress caught on the hood of the car and it rips off and the kids like, Oh look, Dad, bear chips. And they go down there the next day to buy a car. And the it's like I said, this the bits are funny, the Kurt Russell trying to get his money to get into Congress, the the Warring Brothers, and when his daughter comes to take over. And it's, like I said, it is just a tremendous amount. It is just funny as hell. Lots of bits, some great stuff. And Kurt Russell, you wouldn't think it, but he's got some great comedic timing in this movie. Everybody just meshes well together. And I just, I really can't recommend this movie enough. It's, it's not stupid toilet humor. It's just funny as hell. And I truly enjoyed it as much today as I did the first time I watched it. Now, Suzanne mentioned that, you know, that he, he, he was, he was, he needed money to get into Congress. Like, no, no, he's going to buy a congressional seat. That's the, that's the kind of scumbag we're talking about here. He, he's like trying to make a backhanded deal to try to get into Congress. And that, that's uh, it's it's weird. It's a weird it's a weird subplot, but you, you can just tell these are the people that he deals with. Um, yeah, I, I love I love both Jack Wardens in this movie, but you you only get the one for a little while because the plot of this movie is the 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 one who has the more successful car lot um, sabotages his brother to take him have a heart attack by. Having one of his hotheads speedster people go over there and wreck his car while he's still inside, he has a heart attack. So they have to bury him in the lot to keep appearances that he's still alive, and um, and basically, you know, keep the keep keep the business going without the brother getting wind and then getting control of his business. Um, like I mentioned, talking about the cast, it's just got a great it's got a great set of character after this film. And uh, like Suzanne said, the dog the dog is a uh, I always loved the dog in the movie. And it's like the like second time I've ever seen it. It's been a long time, but he's got such personality in this movie, and I, I think he's kind of great. Um, Frank McRae, always wonderful and everything. Play like this scrappy mechanic who knows how to fix. And well, when I say fix, this is this is the level. At the beginning of the movie, a bumper falls off a car, and, and Kurt Russell puts takes his gum and, and sticks to on the rusty bumper to make it go back on the car and it holds for, for about <laughs> till it hit a bump. There, there ain't no way that thing's holding on with some bubble gum though. The, those are like old fenders and it, it, it ain't going <laughs> to stick with a bubble gum. Um, but it's just like a, it's a comedy. So you got to take it with a grain of salt. And I took it because it was Kurt Russell doing like, yeah, that works. You know, <laughs> until somebody hits a bump and then it falls off. Um, 
Um, Garrick Graham, you know, like baby face in this movie. You know, looking looking suave with with, with the shirt open. He, he he can sell me a car. That's all I'll say about that one. And uh, he um he almost looks as good as Kurt in this in this movie. It's like 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 a, like a dual you know dual masculine salesman team in this movie. Um, yeah, it's it's really fun stuff. The the problem I have with the movie is is not you know the great the great commercial gags where they 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 hijack the TV and stuff like that. That, that that's fun because. <laughs> <laughs> the way it's written, you know, with the Jimmy Carter address and stuff is is is, is so perfect. I, I love it. Jerry Granger is the cowboy shooting up the cars across the street. And uh, that's 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 an amazing scene. But uh, when I get into the end, you know, because they're, they're not they're not like fined by the FCC or anything. Nobody's looking into that. But the problem in the end is that once once Deborah Harmon fires everybody from finding out about her father and stuff. Uh, um, she makes a claim on TV that they have a mile of cars on their lot, so they have to. The big, the big, big ending is, is them, and it's necessary. It just seems like it's overly long. Is them collecting all these cars and driving across the desert, and so she has her mile of cars. And there's a, a superstition of the film where Garrett Graham won't drive a red car, but their cars are so cheap that the water shoot, water comes off by by spraying water, and the the paint comes off by shooting water on it. So he has to drive a red car. To make the pile of cars. <laughs> now, with all the FCC, you know, and national security, you know, interrupting the president's speech, you know, with their with their makeshift Radio Shack, uh, you know, satellite. That that seems like it'd be the big concern to me. This some fucking, you know, hey, she ain't got a pile of cars on her lot, but you know, the FCC violations and possible jail time that would follow with what they did in this movie. <laughs> oh. It's it's fun though. I, I haven't watched it in a very long time, and, and probably when I was very young, I saw this. But I know it's a favorite of Ricky Morgan's. Uh, he wanted to be on the show, but he kind of semi-retired for, from podcasting. But then again, I, I, I said about this new thing, you know, I'll talk about it towards the end of the show. Like, hey, I'll be a part of that. Like, eh, okay, you know, it's fine. But um, we'll get to that later. Um, used cars though, it, it it's wild. But like I said, my, my only real bugaboo about it is it's 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 almost two hours long, and I don't think it should be. It, yeah, it just see seems that. overly overly long. Yeah, um, not slight of the movie, but just the, the, it seems like it could have been did a little, a little trimming and made it an hour forty maybe. I, I don't know. They're young. They were young filmmakers at this time though, so I can't really say hey, they're bad at their job. But no, they they were young feel filmmakers at this time, so I can't I can't really slight them on that. But um, anything else about the film you want to talk about, Suzanne? Uh, go for it. Oh no, it's it's just funny to me because I remember. You know, my mom would never buy a new car, so we would end up trolling these used car lots and just seeing a stereotypical used car salesman. I swear, I can go, if I go to a grocery store, I can spot a used car salesman at like 50 paces without my glasses on. So I just, they, they, made, they totally made the spoof on used car lots because it was a lot different in the 70s and 80s than it is now. But I, I, it's funny. The bits are funny. I do agree because it really does start. The last 30 minutes of the movie really, really drag. The, there are some funny parts when they were moving the cars with the high school kids and had the, him holding the rabbit's foot in his mouth while he's driving the red car. Yep. And Toby in the front seat with him. I love that dog. It's it's still, it's just, it's, it's funny. It's the comedy is still there, but yeah, I do agree with you that it, it is a bit draggy toward the end. You, and I, you said 40 minutes. Yeah. I, I think a nice hour 35 hour 40 would have been perfect, but I agree with you. It's like, these guys were just starting to get their feet wet and they made a damn, a damn funny movie. So I'm going to give it, it's like, it's a, it's a solid eight for me. Yeah, let's take a couple more watches for me um, to, 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 to juice it up that far. But I, I, I say it's a seven, you know, based on, you know, what I liked about the film, the cast alone, it's it's, it's up there for me as far as like, uh, it's better than average. I mean, I, I'd watch it again. I think uh, Shout has a nice, uh, nice Blu-ray out of it for you guys to pick up. And I've seen it for like less than 15 bucks at certain points in time. So, um, yeah, Shout's like be killing it with those, uh, with some of those transfers. Yeah, get yeah, that roadhouse are. disc back, you know. 
<laughs> it's a nice special edition, Susan. Put it that way. I know, I know, I know. Oh my gosh! But um, yeah, that's about it for this one. We'll, we'll move on to our next uh, jalopy adventure, uh, which is the goods. Uh, right after this. Sir, there's no smoking on airplanes. I know. It's ridiculous, isn't it? If you like that, I'll have to report you to the FAA. Stacy, did you know that in 1969, when smoking was allowed on all flights, we put a man on the moon? I had no idea. And it starts with ashtrays, and it ends with all of our precious freedoms being stripped away. But we don't have to take it. Like Rosa Parks and David Lee Roth, when he left Van Halen, we can say enough injustice. We can smoke one for America! Who are you? I'm done ready. I got the goods. You want some cars sold? We'll be there. We got a dealership in the ICU. 211 cars getting suntans on the lot. Don, I don't mean to complain, but it's been a year and a half since I've been home. And I'm 90% sure I left my front door open. It's July 4th weekend, everybody, and we're going to war. Don't even get me started on Pearl Harbor. We are the Americans, and they are the enemy. Never again! Never! Who brought alligators? Uh, Don Reddy sure does put on a show. <laughs> These people are excited about the savings. The goods. Live hard. Sell hard. I think I made a sale. Andy wants to pay in cash. Non-sequential, unmarked bills neatly packed in this canvas bag. Well, that's a bank bag, Teddy. Oh, my eyes! My eyes! Get more of the goods at livehardsellhard.com. The goods. Live hard. Sell hard. From 2009... A cheapo plot synopsis is this. Used car liquidator Don Reddy is hired by a, a flailing auto dealership, dealership to turn their 4th of July sale into a majorly profitable event. Uh, this stars Jeremy Piven as Don, Don Reddy, uh, Bing Rames. as a <laughs> so funny. Jippy is, is the character's name. He's so great. Uh, David Keckner, always great. Uh, James Rowland uh, is, is the guy that owns the lot. Catherine Hahn is a god. So wonderful. Uh, Ed Hell. There, there's uh, Ken Jeong, Rob Riggle. There's some people in this movie. Alan Thick, Charles Napier. Super racist in this movie, but spectacular. <laughs> this this movie might trigger some people because they say some shit. But uh, I'll um, ask Suzanne first again because I, I can't lead for shit right now because I'm just waking up. What she <laughs> thinks of the goods. Oh, my God. This it's It's hilarious. There, once again, you've got a movie, you've got your little, t- you know, your the line through the movie, the guys hires this group of super salespeople to, you know, boost his 4th of July sale. And, oh my God, you get like an amazing cast of characters. I think my favorite character in this movie, I gotta go. <laughs> it is one of the most minor characters in the whole movie. Rob Riggle is a 10-year-old child as Rob Riggle. Every time he was on screen and Catherine Hahn was just, she knows he's a child, even though he's got a grown up hot body. But she still wants to <laughs> fuck him and it's hilarious. I, you know, know, I know it is. It's, it's a pedophilia joke that works. I'm, I, I hate to say that, those words out of my mouth, but you know what? It's a pedophilia joke that works. Uh, this, I, I just can't even find where to start with this. Once again, you have an amazing ensemble cast. You know, I watched this uh, was a couple of years ago, and I almost didn't because I just don't like Jeremy Piven. I just, he's smarmy. And I'm glad this movie ended up being, he was, you know, a, a, the star, but just this, these great actors actually had more to do with the movie than he did. I, I oh my God, I just, and Will Ferrell had a kind of a cameo spot throughout the movie. That was pretty damn funny. I really, I, I, I think maybe, and it just might be the age things, the comedy in this movie might work a little better than Used Cars because it's, it, it Used Cars is kind of showing its age. I don't, like I said, it's, I, Used Cars is always going to get nostalgia points for me because I remember watching it when I was a kid. Obviously the very censored version that they showed on regular television. But this one, it's, 
And oh, there's you, we forgot Craig Robinson is the DJ. Yes, I I, I, I just thought that too. the most inopportune music at the time. I'll play something upbeat, and he plays like this really sad song from the fifties. Don't tell me what to do. There's you really can't go wrong with any anybody in this movie. It's just it's funny. It's got great cast other than Jeremy Piven. The plot is, you know, it's it's there, but it's not really I guess I think it's more of a movie about bits than it is an actual plot driven movie. I I don't know. There's just so much going on. And I think one of the other funnier bits is Ed Helms and his boy band. No, big ups. You got to Google it, man. Come oh, on, that's man. right. Big up. <laughs> big ups. <laughs> and and the, it's just, it's a fun movie. I, I had a lot more to say, but apparently I just completely forgot where I was going with that. So I'll let Gary take over from here. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll start off my my love, which I love this film. I, I love where they use cars. The only part of the have more more well versed in this movie, but it keeps getting funnier every time I watch it. And it's like I said, it's not just Piven. It's just all these people throwing. If you ever want to watch a film where James Brolin is trying to fuck David Koechner in the movie, this, yeah, this, I forgot about that. This, this this is the movie for you, okay? And uh, that, that's that's a plot point. In this movie, he he wants to. I believe is played by the, the still beautiful Wendy Malick <laughs> to have sex with David Koechner in the movie. And he, he you know, Ch- Champ Kai's not having it, baby. That's no whammy right there for him. And the, 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 the Piven stuff, the Piven monologues in this movie are, are, are the best. The best. This is the best work he's done since PCU. And I, I'm a person who loves Entourage. And I love, the, he's all, all, all full mean spirit on Entourage. Entourage, but that's just the way the character is. That's the way the person he was based on was too—a real ball buster. But as far as like comedy goes and timing goes, like making you believe what he's saying, it, I, it, this is the best he's been since PCU for me. And there's <laughs> one of the one of said monologues is when they're on the airplane and he, he's gonna just have a cigarette because he wants to have a cigarette. And Kristen Shaw shows up, who's who I love too. So many folks I love in this movie. <laughs> She tells me he can't smoke. So he gets in this whole fucking speech about, you know, back in the day, it was class to fly an airplane. People wear a suit and ties. You could light up a cigarette, yada, yada, yada. It's a long fucking speech. And in the end, it turns into like the big old fucking party where she's taking her top off and they're all smoking like weed and stuff on the plane. And it would never happen in real life. But it's just it's just an example of, you know, those pivot monologues in this movie that just really work for me. One, one of which leads to a race riot led by Charles, who just this gruff old dude that they still keep around on the lot, and he's just like racist as shit, and you know, crazy and uh, amazing in, in this film. It just proves why why he was still working because he did this so convincingly. Although I'm sure the man in real life was a big teddy bear. <laughs> um, but what else? The, the Catherine. Hunt- yeah, her, her, her whole game in this movie, just from her being who she is, and from her wanting to fuck the old man child, I, it just <laughs> it just was it was it's fucked it's fucked up, okay? It really is. But you can't help but laugh at it a little bit. It, it, even you, the most uptight people, but she's fucking sitting at the at the dinner table and she's fucking making the dick sucking motions to the fucking ten year old. I I can't stop laughing. I can't stop laughing. I know. I can't it's, either. I can't either. Sorry. It's so wrong, but you can't stop laughing. Uh, Jimmy, um, Ving Rhames, like this sweet black guy who, who just just fucking lays pipe all, all over all the cities they go to, but is looking for true love in this stripper. Is there something bittersweet? There's something sweet about that that I uh, I can get behind. Although, <laughs> <laughs> in the end, it didn't matter because when he finally got her, neither one of them wanted it anyway. But, you know. One of, my, one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie, though, is where they, they, they get to the Hacienda Courts, you know, their they're, they're home away from home, which is like a hotel chain that's in this movie, but they go there all the time. And they're, they're, they're looking for something to watch on TV. <laughs> the lines the lines that they make when they're watching the fucking pornography. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, I mean, what, what, what did Kekka say? Something about, it's like, well, I paid for this. 
it'd be an insult not to masturbate or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like with confidence, you know, he's watching this by himself and he's still talking to it, talking to the TV. And of course, Babs watching, Babs watching pornography is hilarious. Yes. Yeah. She, she's like, don't look at the camera. Don't look at the camera. Oh, you ruined it. You know, like she was about to come or something, but she couldn't do it because she looked at the camera, you know. And, and Jimmy and the Dawson's Creek was just so random. You know, James, James, James Van de Beek, my, my, I can't say the word, or the N word, you know, but I'm, you know, still right for, for, for an oversized black man to let Dawson's Creek. And there's, there, there's a lot to love about the film. All the people show up and, and um, the comedy's there. If you ever needed a film where you have Will Ferrell dressed as Abraham Lincoln with mutton chops and trying to break his fall with a dildo because they fucked up the, the <laughs> They fucked up the pack where the parachute was supposed to be, so he had a bunch of sex toys in the bag instead of the parachute. It's like, oh, <laughs> I, my, if I put the dildo to my knees, and I, I, it'll, it'll break my fall or something. <laughs> oh, it's just so wrong. It's so wrong, but it's so funny. And that, Dr. Ken Jeong is the, the, the whipping boy of this movie, and that that's always funny. He's just this tiny guy, and... I, I, I don't love the hangover with Phil, but I'll always think of him popping out of the uh, popping out of the trunk, butt naked, because you can't see certain things, saying, you want to fuck on me, okay? <laughs> it's, it's it's just so funny still, you know? The tiny Asian man popping out of the trunk naked, you know, beating the shit out of people. But um, yeah, the good's a, the good's a fun time. I'm, I'm sure a lot of folks are, tr- are, are turned off, because, like you, Suzanne, a lot of folks don't like Jeremy Piven. They, they don't like him as a person. They, they don't like him, his comedy, his brand of comedy. But this this is an ensemble that, that never really quits throughout the whole movie. It's it's not just his movie. So if you're ever on the fence to, to, to want to have a good time for, for 90 minutes, go, go enjoy all these comedy people because there they're, they're, they're are plenty in this movie. So many comedy people. The people that you thought they, that wouldn't be funny. Sorry for the bell share, but flu, flu Fluid motion, people. Acid reflux. But, um, yeah, I, I think you guys will enjoy it if you haven't seen it before. It's just um, just the amount of people that show up in it is, um, is astounding and how, how funny. They all have their moments in the movie. N- nothing, nothing's like, oh, this guy was in there for like a hot second. No, they all have their moments that, that where, where they're really funny, at least one part in the movie. So I, I, I got to give it to the goods. And uh, Suzanne, um, what, what, what's your rating and anything else you got to say about it? Yeah, I guess for me, this one, it's, I I think I appreciate it more because it, it really was not, it, it's short on plot, but all of the pieces work. And I guess I think for me, Catherine Hahn steals this movie, her and David Techner. I think they are just, their parts are so funny that it. Have you been, have you been, have you, have you been watching, have you been watching WandaVision? No. Oh, you got to watch it just for her. I don't want to give it away because she she uh, she plays a pretty big, pretty big part in it. Yeah, especially right, towards the later well, episode. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's just she's a. I, I have yet to see her in anything. I really don't care for her in. And I mean, even Ving Rhames obviously love him, but like I said, it's it. If you just want something funny to put on, I can recommend this movie. It's short on plot, really long on laughs. But yeah, I'm pretty much going to give it probably, I, I don't, I, I really hate the fact that I rated used cars a little higher than I'm going to rate this one. For me, used cars, you know, the nostalgia points and you know how terrible I am about that. I think this movie is hilarious. You know, maybe I'm just going to, you know, now I'm just going to give it an eight. I think eight's going to be my general feeling on both these movies. Yeah, I got to be fair with it too. I mean, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's film that's really short on plot. But but big on laughs. It, it, it has a beginning, middle, and end. You know, I'll, I'll give it that. Which which starts with Ken Jeong taking uh, a bank bag of money and getting a blue blue paint exploded in his face. And uh, oh, what the, the line? What's the line that he says? Uh, I, I I just got jizzed on by a smurf or something, something like that. I don't know. He's got blue paint all over his face. So it's hilarious. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, the collection of comedy people. Will we'll make you want to watch this movie. The jokes land, and K- Catherine Hahn. I, I can't. I can't stress it enough how funny she is and how talented she is. Parks and Rec, this Step Brothers, uh, cur- currently 
Wanda Division. I mean, if you, there's, there's a reason to watch that you can you be shit about Marvel characters to do it for 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 uh, for her character on the show. I think I think she's wonderful. Um, I mean, those bad Moz movies were were stinkers. You know, without her, I I, I wouldn't have stayed for the second one if she wasn't going to be in it. Well, you know, Christine Baranski shows up in the second one too, which I have a um, I have a thing for her. Long legs, <laughs> smile, does Gary, and she, she's got that for for days. And um, um, yeah, th- this movie though, like I said, it, I, I I hate I, I hate to use the word not for everybody, but I think that somebody will find something to laugh at this movie. Somebody will find something to be offended by, which y- you should be offended by the the wrong right. little joke, you know. You, you uh, let me should, interrupt for one second. Yep. Guess where Catherine Hahn was born? Where? Westchester, Illinois. Oh, that's nice. That's where Suzanne lives. Yeah, you want to you send her some like dirty pictures or something. Oh my Trump's god! Saying. I just because I was just pulling up her filmography and I'm like, what? <laughs> she was only born here. Then they moved to Cleveland, but I, that was fucking awesome. That's that's still awesome. Yes, but yeah, you, you you should be you should be offended by some of the jokes in this movie. But I at the same time you you laugh at them. Because it's so ridiculous, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I gotta give it an eight too. I mean, I wish I could rate it higher than that, but because um, the, the the plot is a little lacking, that that's the reason why I was really losing any points. Yeah, but um, everybody's funny in it. Sorry about that. All the jokes work in it, in my opinion. You know, I don't think you have a bad time with this movie if you watch it. And I, I um, I, I gotta love it, man. Um, eight out of ten. But um. Yeah, well, well, that's the end of this one, and I'm, I'm fumbling my words now, and uh, we'll be back after this to close up the show. This is Bo from LegionPodcasts.com. Hey, it's been a crazy time, and when the world gets nuts, we're happy to offer some old-fashioned podcast entertainment. But for some folks, getting a laugh out of a show isn't really helping these days. People who depend on tips in their bartending jobs or have been put on furlough with no pay till the worst of this coronavirus threat has passed. That's a tough spot. That's why we set up a GoFundMe for members of our community, a sort of grand scale take a penny, leave a penny. For people like myself, for whom the recent disruptions haven't kicked us out of work, well, we can drop a few of those extra pennies in the GoFundMe jar. For those who are directly affected by recent events, and find themselves looking for money to pay the electric bill or keep the water on, well, how about you give me a shout at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Let me know the situation and what you need, and we'll do our best to make life a little easier. And you can find links to the GoFundMe on the front page of legionpodcasts.com, on our Facebook group page, or on Twitter at Legion Podcasts, where it's the pinned tweet. For those of you who are able, thanks in advance for chipping in. And members of our community who need a hand, hey, here we are. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and we're all going to get through this together. Legion isn't just a name, it's who we are. Thanks for listening to all the shows here on Legion Podcasts, and we'll talk to you soon. Hello? Hello? Who are you trying to reach? I don't know. Oh, I think you've got the wrong number. Do I? I'm going to hang up. Wait, don't hang up. What's that noise? Popcorn? You're making popcorn. Uh-huh. I only eat popcorn when I listen to podcasts. I'm about to listen to a podcast. Oh, really? Which one? Probably the podcast on Haunted Hill. Is that the one with the two guys with the beards? Uh, yeah, Dan and Gav. Most episodes, they look at two different horror movies. Each episode, they look at a world of a strange, where they look at weird things from around the world. Sometimes, they even do special episodes where they look at different genres or directors' discographies and talk about them. Do you have a boyfriend? Maybe. So where can I find a podcast on Haunted Hill? Well, you can go to legionpodcast.com, Facebook, Twitter, or just go into iTunes and search for the podcast on Haunted Hill. So, are you going to ask me out? I thank my co-host Suzanne for uh, joining me on this Friday after get a show a show for you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying the weekly releases. So I'm trying to keep it going. Uh, the next one that you should hear, schedule permitting because stuff happens, um, is going to be with our with our, our fearless leader 
uh, Bo Rensdell. We're going to do uh, the Money Pit in, in Mouse Hunt. You know, where, where it's basically renovations gone bad. And uh, I, I don't remember the Money Pit all that much, but I know I love Mouse Hunt a lot. A lot I love Mouse Hunt. But um, it's Shelley Long and then Tom Hanks. So you can't really go wrong there. Uh, 1987, I think, Tom Hanks and Shelley Long. Uh, so that should be a good time. That's that's the one that he chose. That's the one we're going to do. Sweet. But um, other st- Sweet. Other stuff? Uh, Suzanne, what you got coming up, girl? Oh, God. NFW, we just finished up. Oh, my God. What the hell did we watch? How can I forget? What did we watch? That's that's a good question. Um, <laughs> we are- oh, my God. What the hell is wrong with me? I know I cut out uh, earlier that much. That, that's a... Uh... Oh, my... How can I... Okay, there's there's another W coming out where we watch something. And the the one we watched last week, which was called <laughs> Crap Alive, uh, we do have a follow-through in the movies. A Oh, my God, no, I forgot. Cameron Mitchell makes a brief appearance in both of these movies. And I can't remember what the hell we just watched. Oh, my God. But, yeah, that's coming up. I'm not sure what direction we're going to be going. I am leaning real hard towards... Um, good old TV terror from the 70s and 80s, and we'll see if I win. Cool. Yeah, um, two jig minimum commentaries. I'm ho- hoping to get one recorded. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm, I am bringing it back, though. I, I haven't done it yet, but I, I have ideas to make it rotating four-man teams. Uh, I hope that works for my co-hosts. I hope it works for everybody. You, you may see... You may see uh, ones from the original two drink mixed in. Like oh, I'm trying to fit one in a show and, and throw in somebody else. It's just to mix it up, and um, I think it'd be be good for all of us not to have four or five people on the show because we do a commentary show. You have five or six people on the show, and no offense to people that do that. You start talking over each other, and then yeah, that's that's it's that bad for the show. People love the banter more than anything else. It's just uh, not, not something I want <laughs> right now. Um, and uh, this week, a uh, show is not happening for probably like a month or not, a month or so at least from now because it's going to take a long time to get these these lists together. Is um, it, my, my, our, our first, well, my 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 mind hosting uh, horror podcast ever on Legion Podcast Network. I haven't decided the title of it yet, but I uh, took a cue from our our friends at the Watsy Party uh, unknowingly. So I I, I asked if I take the ball and roll with it because I don't want to step on their toes. Um, Dave Z and, and Mr. Watson killing it at the, the Watsy party, uh, where we take, I, I, I think it's going to be like 20 subgenres. We're going to narrow it down to 20. We're going to put them on a wheel and then spin the wheel like, or like roulette. And then where it lands on, that's the subgenre we're going to do, uh, that, that particular episode. And I have like seven or eight people interested in it so far to, 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 to help me with this. So I think that every two weeks would be ideal and then have a, a mixed panel of those people one once you know once per episode. Um, split squad, if you will, if you want to talk in baseball terms. Uh, spring spring training, but I think it'd be fun. I think it'll if I if I were to I, I always said if I were to do a horror show, a horror podcast, that I want to stay away from franchise horror because everybody does it, and I get why you do it. I mean, you, you love it. It gets huge downloads. But downloads are something that I've never been interested in. I've never been interested in downloads. This is why I do stuff like the last show, the Uninvited and Death Ship show. Are they good films? No, but they're fun to talk about. But they may be films that may say, hey, I'm not going to listen to this show. And I say, okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm fine with that. But yeah, this will be the first horror venture i ever done. I have um, a couple more ideas swimming around my head. It's just a matter of making them happen and finding time to edit all of said shows. So you may get a few surprises on your feed on, on the Legion podcast feed. And I hope, uh, I hope, hope you dig over land, you know, as, as far as Jamie coming back, I'm not sure quite when or if she's coming back, but I can tell you that she has, it appears coming up on, uh, for the second part of the A24 series on the podcast on the stairs that you should, you all should check out even, even if you're Willis Wheeler that hates those movies, and I, I don't I don't love them like Jamie loves them, but I would listen to Bo Ransdell and Duncan McLeish and Jamie uh, to talk about them for, 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 for four hours long, just just to hear him talking about them. And so that's coming up. That records this weekend, I think, so look for that in your feeds. 
if you guys are subscribers to the podcast on the stairs. Uh, speaking of which, I'll push Duncan as if he fucking needs any more of his fucking ego polished. You know, he look. I, I it sounds like I'm being so cruel, but I'm just busting his balls I've done for so many years now. Summer series picks are coming up this weekend, so look for that live video where I'll be joined by so many podcasters. He's up in the ante this year, people. My my cushion is going to need to cover the amount of people that he's picked. Uh, I I may develop a hemorrhoid or two just sitting in this chair listening to these podcasters talk about horror films from their from the 2010s um, and and through 2019. Uh, yeah, lots of people, lots lots of great great voices. Summer series is uh, Duncan's baby. He, he puts a lot of work into it. I admire him, but I would not want to deal with all that scheduling. It's it's fucking insane. It's insane how many people are going to be on this. He's he's raised the amount of people this time around. So that's coming. Everything's coming. Everything's in the works. But uh, thank you for listening to this show and uh, supporting Legion, uh, the Legion Patreon, uh, the Legion GoFundMe for the people that are still down and out. Um, confidence. No politics, but confidence in this country, I hope. Um, things will get better, I hope. Uh that's it for this one. Um, we'll see you guys all soon. Where this has been the Cine Beef Podcast, where if you've got beef, we've got the grinder. Bye bye now. Bye.